Hey everyone, Mr. Fritz here. Uh, we're going to do some notes. Uh, we're going to learn a little bit about finding the area of a triangle uh, and the law of sines. This is going to be a two-part video. First part is going to be about the area of the triangle. That'll be part one. And then uh, the second part will be using this thing called the law of sines. So that's part two. Um, this is part one. So let's dive into it. Um, we're going to start off with the area of a triangle. And you should know already some of these things. You should know how to find the area of a right triangle. Uh, you should know how to find the area of a non-right triangle if you're given the base and the height of that triangle. Um, you should also be able to use sine, cosine, tangent, these trig functions to find missing sides or angles of a triangle. And you should be able to, uh, to use these inverse trig functions as well. Uh, if you can't do any of these or if there's a question about any of this stuff, I would say pause the video, go look it up, and come on back to this. So let's kind of start off with just what you know so far about finding areas of triangles. I've got three triangles here. Uh, they all have the same height, and they all have different bases, uh, but we know the formula for the area of a triangle to be one half the base times the height. One thing that I want you to notice is there's three different cases we could have for um, these different heights. You notice in this case, the height actually is one of the sides of this triangle. Uh, second case, the height is within the triangle. And then the third case would be that the height is actually outside of the triangle. These are all the height from uh, the base to the uh, topmost vertex of a triangle, uh, and they can happen in these three different ways. What I do hope that you notice, though, is that all three of these um, triangles have a height that is perpendicular to the base. So that's going to be important to keep in mind. Um, so that's all well and good when we're given what this height value is and what we're given when we're given this base, but you know, what about a triangles like this, where I don't know what the height is? I, I have no idea how tall this triangle is, or how tall uh, this triangle is. And we're going to need to do some stuff in order to figure out what this height is. Um, with this triangle on the left, we're going to tackle this kind of triangle right now in this video. This, is, this will be kind of later, the second triangle. Um, and, and in order really to find what this height is, we're going to have to use trigonometry. So if you imagine dropping an altitude, uh, creating a height with your base, what's called 10 centimeters the base, that forms a right triangle. And I hope that you're seeing in here there is actually a right triangle that I have formed. And I know the hypotenuse of this right triangle. And I'm really interested in this side of the right triangle. And I'm given an angle in this right triangle. So we can use a little bit of trig to find what that height actually is. So let's put that into practice with some examples. <clears throat> so here's an example that you should find in your notes. I want to find the area of this acute triangle. And uh, what you'll notice here is it doesn't really look like there's a base at first glance. Uh, but we can kind of make one of these triangles a base. Let's just pretend that this is tilted sideways a little bit. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that this is my base, this 10 centimeter uh, edge or the side here. And I'm going to create a altitude by dropping a perpendicular line in my triangle. And this is going to be my height right here, h. And if you can kind of see, the height is going to be kind of the distance between the base and that vertex. So that's still the height of my triangle, even though it's kind of shifted. In order to find that height, now I have a right triangle inside of my bigger triangle. And it really wasn't the best triangle drawn, but nonetheless, I hope you can see this right triangle that is in here. And I can use a trig ratio to find this, this h. Let's think about this angle. I have an opposite side and I have a hypotenuse in relationship to this angle. So I can rewrite that as the sine of 40 degrees is equal to my opposite h over 9. Uh, and so that's going to be then h, if I solve for h, that's going to equal 9 times the sine of 40 degrees. Now remember, we know the area for a triangle. The area is 1 half base times height. So now that I've been able to rewrite my height in this expression, I'm going to use that same expression in this height here. It's still the same formula, still the same equation. So let's continue there and say that the area is going to equal 1 half my base, which I called 10 in this example, times my height, which is this entire 9 sine of 40 degrees. And uh, once you multiply all this together in your calculator, make sure you're in degree mode, uh, it, this comes out to be the area is 
centimeters squared. So here's an example of how to do this. Again, we had to drop an altitude. We had to use trig to find what that height is. And then we're just plugging it into the formula. So I have an example here that I'd like you to try. And you're going to have to do exactly what I did in that example. So give this problem a shot. And when you're ready, uh, you can resume the video and see my answers. All right, so for this one, I decided to call 31 kilometers that side to be my base. And I'm going to pretend that this vertex is the opposite side where I'm making a altitude with a right angle. That's my height. And you can kind of look through my work here to find that actual H in this right triangle that I created here. I came out with a final area of 383.7 square kilometers. That's my acute triangles. So let's take a look at an obtuse triangle. Now remember, this is kind of where the height falls outside of the triangle, and we can still handle this. We're just going to have to draw uh, an extension of this base. So in this example, I'm still using that same formula for area. I'm still thinking area equals 1 half base times height. And it looks like here we can call uh, the base this side here, the 6.4. If I extend my base out, now you can kind of see I can drop a perpendicular so that now this becomes my height from the base to the highest point there. So again, it's kind of rotated, but I hope you can kind of visualize what I'm drawing here. Uh, and now I have formed a right triangle right here. And I know what this hypotenuse is. That's the same 10.2 centimeters. Uh, I know what this angle is, since that is going to be 180 degrees minus 125, since this angle here is 125. So that's going to be a 55 degree angle. <clears throat> so now I want to find the H. So I can use a little bit of trick here. The sine of 55 degrees is going to equal opposite, the side that's opposite to this, h over this 10.2, my hypotenuse. And I can rearrange this and say that h then will equal 10.2 times the sine of 55 degrees. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it into my formula for h. And I'll do that right here. So I get the area is going to equal 1 half my base, which is 6.4 times my height, which is this right here, 10.2 times the sine of 55 degrees. So typing that all into the calculator, make sure you're in degree mode. We hit enter, and this comes out to B. Uh, I have 26.7 centimeters squared. So again, a little bit different of a, uh, an example where I have to draw that altitude or that height outside of the triangle, but really the practice is, is quite similar. So I have another you try example. Give that one a shot, pause the video, and then when you're ready, uh, see what the answer is. Okay, here is my answer to this one. Uh, I had to, I, I, in this case, I called this side to be my base. Really, you could have done it either way if you chose to think of this 21 centimeter side as your base and you dropped an altitude from angle B, that's fine too. Really doesn't matter. Uh, but you can check through my work and look and see how I got the height and how I use that height to find my area of this triangle. So hopefully you got it. Uh, so let's kind of generalize this process. We've done a couple examples where we are using um, heights of non-right triangles. We were trying to figure out what the area is of these triangles and we had to do a little bit of trig to get there. So in both of these examples, I have triangle ABC, triangle ABC, and remember that the sides A and B and C are opposite of uh, those angles. And we use our general formula for the area of a triangle, one half base times height. And in this case, the base is A with these two triangles. So you, you'll see in this next formula, I just wrote A times H, since the A is my base. So just to kind of remove some confusion, this A is referring to this base of this triangle. Uh, we can take that one step further now, and we can figure out that we, or we figured out that we could find the H by using the sine of these angles here. So that's going to look something like this. 
over on the left with my acute triangle, the sine of C was H over B, and I could find in general H will be this side B times the sine of C. That's my height. And over in this example, we did a little bit of work to find what this inside angle is, this acute angle in this kind of new right triangle. But remember that the sine of 180 degrees minus C is the same thing as the sine of C. So let's kind of conceptualize that for a second here. If I'm on the unit circle and I have some acute angle, I'll have some the cosine of that angle theta and the sine of that angle theta. Here's my angle, my rotation. If I were to uh, keep going into the second quadrant with that same reference angle theta, uh, this whole angle should have the same, this is going to have some cosine and then uh, the same sine of that same theta. So these two y values are exactly the same. That means that the sine of this angle should be the same as the sine of this angle. So we can really forget about this whole 180 minus c thing and just leave that as h equals b times the sine of c. So you could have plugged in whatever this angle c is in the first place. So in general, with this type of triangle and this configuration, we can say that the area is going to equal 1 half uh, ab times the sine of c in this triangle. So what if we messed up these uh, letters or arrange it in a different way or we wanted to drop an altitude from C over to side C or, or whatever. Well we can account for that and uh, really we can generalize this with this triangle no matter what configuration you make as long as you're using your opposing sides or your A and your B and your C we can use all three of these equations. They all really mean the same thing they just kind of start from a different uh, side or angle. So looking at the first formula if I'm given um, sides A and B and the angle C, then I would use this formula right here. If I'm given sides A and C and angle B, I would use this middle formula right here. And then finally, if I were given sides B and C with angle A, I would use this third formula here. So I hope you kind of see that really it doesn't matter uh, which formula you use. It depends on what information is given to you. And I hope that you're seeing too that the angle uh, that is used in all of these equations is whatever the interior angle is or the, uh, uh, the inside angle between the sides surrounding it. So another way of saying that is, oops, too far, uh, is given the lengths of two sides of a triangle. So here's some triangle. If I'm given two sides, and I take a look at the included angle. I think I just called this the interior angle, but same type of a thing. The area of the triangle is half of the product of the two sides. So if this is side A and this is side B, it would be half the product of the two sides, A times B, and the sine of the included angle. So if this is angle C, this would be sine of C. So really, you can just remember it this way, or you can remember it this way, it doesn't matter to me, uh, whatever works for you. Uh, so that is it for part one of this video where we're looking at different areas of triangles that are not nice and neat right triangles, but as long as we have this information, we should be able to find the area. So uh, make sure you check out part two for the law of cosines, or excuse me, the law of sines, and uh, hope this was helpful.